Hello, welcome everyone to the Regional Anesthesia Drugs Part 2. In the first part, we had an introduction to the local anesthetics. Okay, uh, so now in this, uh, we are going to talk about the mechanism of action, the nerve types and the effects of local anesthetics on the, on the body. So let's look at the sodium channel. Um, the sodium channel is an alpha subunit with four domains each having six alpha helical membrane spanning segments and one to four beta subunits. The physiology, in the resting state, the sodium ions are denied entry. Once they get activated, they enter the cell. This, this uh, process is called depolarization. In the inactivated state, the influx of ions is denied, but the active transport causes efflux of sodium outside the cells, which is called repolarization. I'm sure we are aware of this and we have read this in the physiology. The local anesthetic binds to alpha subunit during activated and inactivated states, prevents influx of sodium needed for depolarization. This is how the local, uh, local anesthetic stops the uh, nerve conduction. Unionized lipid soluble drug is in circulation, so it passes through the phospholipid membrane. In the exoplasm, the drug is protonated or ionized. It is this ionized form which binds to the internal surface of a sodium channel and the alpha subunit, preventing the sodium influx. The degree of blockade in vitro is proportional to the rate of stimulation. This is due to the attraction of local anesthetic to open sodium channels. So this is the resting membrane potential, the threshold, threshold potential, and this is the action potential. So what do the local anesthetic do? There's no change in the resting potential. It prevents depolarization from reaching threshold potential, okay, which is seen in the red line. So let's have a look at the nerve fiber types we have. Okay, so these are the sensations, okay, you have mood or the inputs or the functions which the nerves perform. So you have motor, touch and pressure, pain and temperature, fast fibers, pain and temperature, slow and autonomic, okay? And how the blockade is, you can see the direction. So myelinated large to unmyelinated small, okay? Fast conduction to slow. Anesthetic effects slow late to early fast and reversal is from early fast to slow to late. Okay, so this is just how uh, the blockade occurs. Okay, this is just trying to make you understand about that. So nerve related effects, okay, the order of block is autonomic pain, temperature, touch, deep pressure and motor. So you can remember it this way and the fibers to be blocked first is C, then B, then A, okay? Recovery is in the reverse order. So you have motor, then deep pressure, touch, temperature, pain, and then autonomic. So when we look for uh, recovery, say post um, spinal anesthesia, we first check for a recovery uh, of motor. So we ask the patient if you can move your toes or move your feet. So once that happens, I know that the recovery process has started. So here you see it is in the opposite direction. So you have uh, uh, the fibers A recovering and the last one to go uh, recover is C. Sympathetic block can exceed the motor or sensory by two to six dermatomes. So how is the nerve blocked in myelinated versus unmyelinated fibers? In myelinated fibers, uh, the, uh, the function or uh, the conduction is via saltatory conduction, okay? So they jump from one node to another, okay? Blocking, so it is fast. Blocking the node of Ranvier will prevent conduction. Three adjacent nodes must be blocked to prevent or have a successful block of conduction. It takes less local anesthetic to block a myelinated nerve fiber. The unmyelinated fibers, on the other hand, even distribution of sodium channels along entire length of the axon must block a certain length of axon to inhibit impulse transmission. Larger concentration of local anesthetic is required to inhibit impulse transmission because you need to cover that much more area. 
while in myelinated you just have to block mainly the focus is on the nodes of Ranvier. So what are the factors which affect the drug action? Of course, the local anesthetic drug action. So the dosage, so higher the concentration, faster the onset and longer the duration of action. Also uh, important here is the concentration of drugs. So if it's diluted, not diluted, right? So that also will affect. Higher the volume, more or faster the spread of anesthesia. Vasoconstrictor use, epinephrine or adrenaline, limits systemic absorption and maintains drug concentration in the vicinity of nerve fibers. Uh, so, uh, for example, if you're using lignocaine, uh, you can use, if you're using plain uh, lignocaine, you have the dose is four milligram per kilogram. But if you're adding adrenaline, it you can go up to seven mg per kg. So that is how it improves your uh, safety profile and you can uh, go, um, you know, at a higher concentration. Carbonation, sodium bicarbonate is uh, supposedly accelerates the onset and decreases uh, minimum concentration required for conduction blockade. And uh, lipid solubility, higher the lipid solubility, more potent is the drug. So uh, pharmacokinetics or the absorption. Uh, absorption of the drug is proportional to the vascularity. So more vascular the area uh, around which the nerves are present, uh, there is a higher chance of you reaching the toxicity levels very fast. So we uh, adjust the dose of the drug depending on which area we are injecting. There is no one specific concentration or volume which suits uh, all blocks. Absorption into the systemic circulation depends on uh, the type of the uh, drug used, Okay, the characteristics of the agent used, if you have added adrenaline or no, and the site of injection. Inadvertent or accidental injection into a, any vessel uh, will suddenly cause a surge of this into your body. So very high systemic levels, a patient will land up with either a neurological or cardiovascular toxicity. So um, uh, as this, we can see in the box, the lowest con systemic concentration is when you inject subcutaneously or what we call infiltrative uh, or uh, anesthesia, but the highest is intercostal. So when you're giving intercostal blocks, you have to be very, very, very careful because that has got the highest incidences of local anesthetic toxicity, okay? And others are somewhere in between. Pharmacokinetics, that is the distribution of the drug, uh, it is determined by the tissue perfusion, uh, the protein binding, the tissue mass. Okay, Esters are minimally bound while amides are more extensively bound. Okay, That is the reason they are more long acting. Uh, Bupivacaine is most and the least is prilocaine. When protein binding is increased due to some other reasons such as in pregnancy, post myocardial infarction, renal failure, or in children, the free fraction of drug is reduced. Pharmacokinetics, uh, metabolism and excretion of the drug. Uh, while talking about esters, they are rapidly uh, hydrolyzed by plasma cholinesterases and other esterases to inactive compounds. Paraaminobenzoate or PABA is one of the main metabolites. And this is the reason uh, when you see sometimes the allergic or the hypersensitivity reactions. These drugs have short elimination half-life because they are rapidly hydrolyzed. Cocaine is the exception which undergoes hepatic hydrolysis to water-soluble metabolites that are excreted in the urine. Moving on to the amides, amides undergo hepatic metabolism by amidases. Metabolism is much slower than plasma hydrolysis and so amides are more prone to accumulation when administered by continuous infusion. Reduced hepatic blood flow or hepatic dysfunction can decrease amide metabolism. Thank you very much for listening to this talk.